So let's make our first one this year a hail and hearty and energetic one so we don't have to do it twice. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy New Year. We're glad to see you here and glad to be together on this first day of this new year. You know, fairy tales begin once upon a time, but the word of God begins in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I think it's been six years since the Lord's Day coincided with the first day of the new year. And the next time it will happen, I believe, will be in 2034. So who knows where we'll be then. But as a preacher, you know, what, what do you preach about at the beginning of a new week, at the beginning of a new year? Where do you start? Well, how about in the beginning? That makes sense to me, and I hope it will to you in the next few minutes. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning... And then the most important word in the verse, God. In the original language of the Old Testament, Barashit Barach Elohim, or in good old English, in the beginning, God. And before we go any further in that, a really important point. Even though the world had a beginning and time had a beginning, God had no beginning. God is eternal. He has no beginning and no end. So God, the eternal God, creates time. So the word of God can say, in the beginning, but it is not the beginning of God. I think it's important to state that and, and, and remember that. There is no such thing as the beginning of God. In the beginning, God created. The point of Genesis 1 is to, to tell us who's responsible for all we see around us, the, the world, the universe, the heavens, the earth. Who's responsible? It is the God of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, there are a lot of fantastic tales about how things came to be. And, you know, back through time, uh, nearly every culture has had a tale of creation of some sort. Most of them are quite ridiculous. Um, most of them, in fact, are laughable. The Egyptians, for instance, talked about a, a great cosmic egg that hatched. Uh, the Greeks and the Romans had various tales, but a lot of them had to do with warfare amongst the gods. They didn't really explain how the gods got there, but there was warfare amongst the gods, and, and one of them was slain, and um, the, the uh, bleeding body was uh, taken, and with that, the world was created. And so there are just a lot of, of stories like that from, from multiple cultures and they're, they're sort of silly. But really, are those any worse than what is offered by the worldly, secular view today? That eons ago, millions of years, billions of years ago, there was nothing and that nothing exploded. Bang! And suddenly there was something. Well, 
That's once upon a time stuff. That's laughable from the perspective of the believer. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I want you to notice how the Apostle John reflects on this at the beginning of of his gospel. John chapter 1 verse 1 sounds very familiar to the opening verses of the Bible itself. But he writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now, as we know, John, if you study the Gospel of John or any of the Gospel writers, the main point, main subject in their Gospel is Jesus. And in John, it's Jesus as the Word made flesh who dwelt among us. So, John 1 adds to Genesis 1 the idea that Jesus, who is God, was there at the beginning with God, of course. And and in fact, Jesus was the agent through which God created the world. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, Jesus created the heavens, and the earth. In addition to that, in Genesis 1, we learn of the incredible power of the Word of God. Think about this for a moment. God speaks and things happen just by His speaking. God speaks the world into existence. He speaks light into existence. Can you imagine a time when there was no light? Well, we know Scripture says that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness and so forth. So in that sense, there always has been light. But God says, let there be light. And guess what? The lights turn on. This is what happens when God speaks. Things happen. I wish that I had that power sometimes. You know, I I walk into a room in my house filled with people that I live with and no lights on at all. And, And I say, could somebody please turn on a light? So I don't trip over the dog or the cat or whatever animal is there or or one of the people, you know. Could somebody please turn on that? I even say please. God just commanded. You, You know what they say to me when I say please? They say the light switch is on the wall right over there. But God speaks into the darkness, light, and there is light (laughs) from the mouth of a child. (laughs) He just speaks it, and there is light. Verse 3, Genesis 1, and, and that just sets in motion a series of divine commands like that. In the rest of the creation account, notice... In, in verse 6, let this happen. And then in verse 9, let that happen. And verse 11, let this happen. And then let that happen in verse 14. And just keeps on like that. And so it, it continues, let there be creatures in the waters. And there are. And then let there be creatures on the earth. And they're there. Instantly, instantaneously, at the word of God, at the word of the creator, not 
not over eons of time, not over millions and billions of years, but as soon as God speaks it, this is the claim of the Word of God. And let me say, Darwinian evolution, macroevolution, is a God-denying lie. God said, let there be. And there was. And then maybe the one we're most interested in, verse 26. Let us make mankind in our image. And then mankind appeared. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That verse becomes more and more radical with every passing year in this culture. And that verse remains. The word of God remains. One other element that I want to underline today as we just think about the beginning. And that is that that not only did God make it, not only did he create it all, but also that, that everything he made was good. God didn't make any junk. It was all good, including you. And even including me. Six times through six days of creation recorded in Genesis chapter 1. God steps back as he makes things. And he pronounces, I did good. It's good. What else should we expect? God doesn't make mistakes. Mistakes and flaws are our thing. God is perfection. You know, if I make something, um, I know without doubt there's going to be some kind of flaw in it. Uh, No matter how careful I am, and especially for me, if it's some kind of craft or, or art, something which I'm totally not gifted in, I can't even do stick figures well. You know, I'm going to mess up the stick figure that I'm drawing. But my mistakes and and things like that are going to be obvious to all, including me. And even in things that I have some practice and experience in, there's going to be mistakes. I can try to preach the perfect sermon. You know, I can study two or three times as long as normal. I can write it out word for word. I can revise it and, and rewrite it. And practice, 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 and I get up in front of you and my tongue gets tangled in the opening words. And I've messed up. You might not even pick up on it, although if you're related to me, you probably will. And I might not even notice it, which has happened many times. I'm never perfect. But God, God is. God created, and it was good. Six times he pronounces it so. And then when the account closes in in verse 31 of Genesis 1, almost as if to say it it wasn't quite good enough to just, just say that what God had done was good, it says this in Genesis 1, verse 31, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was Very good. It was really good. God doesn't make junk. He doesn't make mistakes. God is perfection. Jesus makes things with no flaws. This helps me understand a verse that I've puzzled about through the years as I've thought about it. 
Uh, in light of this idea, though, maybe I understand it a little bit better than I did at one time. Um, scripture, a lot of times, is the best commentary on Scripture. Jesus said one time, be perfect. Remember? Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, be perfect. What's the Lord saying? Maybe it's just something like, be like me. He goes on to say, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So be like God. Be like me. So six times God says, it's all good. And then the seventh time, it's really good. It's very good. So one way to, to summarize a creation story is like this. God made everything, and everything he made was good. And, you know, as you read it, you almost get the impression, at least I do, that it wasn't all that hard for God to do. He says the words, and it happens. He commands, and the elements respond and obey. He speaks, and light appears. When we read Genesis chapter 1, we ought, above all else, to be impressed with God. In fact, I think throughout Scripture, that ought to be the underlying message. God is good. God is in charge. He's sovereign. He rules. And here in this opening chapter of Scripture, if we don't get that, then really nothing else we take out of Genesis 1 is worth it. A lot of people have a lot of things to say about Genesis chapter 1. All kinds of insights and, and theories and opinions and ideas. But number one had better be that God is number one. God above all things. God above all else. God in charge. And God is good. And none of that has changed. You see, in all these thousands of years since the beginning. Those facts about our God have not changed. We no longer live in a perfect world. Uh, we live, in fact, in a fallen world, in a broken world, but the God who made it did not break it. I broke it. My sin broke it. My flaws, my mistakes messed it up, but God has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And more precisely, the Word of God says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect there is only one way to achieve that perfection. And it has nothing to do with your own efforts to be good, to be right, to be pure, although I think we should make great efforts to do those things. But perfection is not achievable by our efforts. The only way to get there is to get into Christ. In Christ alone, one finds perfection. And so that's why we start this, this new year the Lord has given us in a way that we probably ended it last year. And we call on people to think about being in Christ, getting into Christ, be baptized into Christ. Put on Christ. Clothe yourself with Christ. Become a new creation in Christ. 
and then continue to walk in the light as he's in the light where the blood of his son will continually cleanse you of all sin. If you do that, God will say, it's good. It's very good. And he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of your master. Maybe today you need a new in the beginning, personally. Uh, maybe you've been a believer a long time, but you need a new beginning in Christ. We, we can have that anytime we call on him. Maybe you've never begun in Christ. Again, if you're just doing it by your own efforts, I'm trying to be a good person, trying to be better than I was, that will not work. Perfection comes in Jesus Christ. Get into Christ. Why not today? Why not today? In this new day we've been given, commit yourself to him. If we can help you in any of those things, we want to this morning before we dismiss. Let us know how we can be of assistance to you in your response to God and his son. While together we stand and we sing this song.